All right, welcome everyone to the SIG instrumentation session. Um, I'm Frederick. I am uh, the CEO and founder of uh, Polar Signals. Um, I've been working on uh, Kubernetes things for the past uh, over five years now. Um, I am also a Prometheus maintainer. And I generally do pretty much everything in the intersection of um, observability, monitoring, and um, Kubernetes. And so um, if you've uh, you're using any of the tools kind of in that intersection, there's a good chance that I might have touched them um, over the past five years. Um, you can check out my GitHub and uh, if you want to chat, uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Um, so in case you're new uh, to Kubernetes um, and Kubernetes SIGs, um, essentially uh, special interest groups, um, SIGs, are essentially groups of uh, people within uh, Kubernetes that have a common uh, kind of desire um, that they want to um, improve uh, Kubernetes in some particular way. And uh, SIG instrumentation, as the name kind of implies, is um, effectively all about all kinds of instrumentation uh, that we can add to Kubernetes, but also through sub-projects to kind of allow Kubernetes to be more observable. So like um, we have uh, several metrics projects, we have several um, logging uh, kind of libraries and projects, um, and more recently we've started uh, to, to kind of dive into some tracing aspects as well. But um, organizationally, uh, special interest group SIGs um, are actually uh, kind of well, well organized, <laughs> I'd like to say. Um, and we have a charter and effectively it, it says, we try to cover the best practices for cluster observability across all Kubernetes components um, and develop uh, relevant components. So that's kind of the crisp uh, kind of vision statement of, of our group. Uh, some of the sub projects that you might've heard of are uh, kubestate matrix, klog, which is kind of the um, logging library that is used throughout the Kubernetes ecosystem. Some hate it, some love it. Um, then the metric server, which is uh, a component uh, that is very vital for uh, for running Kubernetes uh, clusters, uh, but I'll dive a little bit deeper into metric server um, a little bit later and same with Prometheus adapter. Um, but just to give you kind of a quick glimpse into uh, what, what we do at uh, within SIG instrumentation. Um, and uh, again, if you're, if you're new here, uh, you it's very easy to kind of uh, get started and uh, talk to us. We have regular meetings um, every two weeks um, at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time um, on Thursdays. Uh, so that's every second week and every other week, essentially. We, um, on Wednesdays, have our triage meeting where we go through the latest issues and kind of assign them to folks that are in the, in the call. So if you're interested in uh, like contributing to Kubernetes, this is a really fantastic way uh, to, to get started. You can just join one of these meetings and uh, we'll, we'll help you find your, your first issue. Uh, but if you also just wanna chat, you can uh, hop on Kubernetes Slack uh, on uh, the SIG instrumentation channel, or you can also join our mailing list, the Kubernetes-SIG-instrumentation. And um, also, uh, this is kind of uh, common throughout most uh, special interest groups within Kubernetes. Um, once you join the mailing list, you'll get access, automatically access to all these meetings. You'll automatically be invited. You'll automatically have access to all the kind of um, meeting notes and all the documents. So you'll, you'll immediately be part of the community as soon as you join the, the mailing list. Um, I, I, do, I certainly uh, don't do this alone. Um, I have uh, three other uh, wonderful uh, co leads and chairs. Uh, so David Ashpole, he works um, at Google. Um, he kind of leads most of the uh, tracing aspects lately, um, but also some really awesome node related uh, topics. Um, Ilana um, also recently started uh, doing a lot of the node specific things. I believe she's also now um, more deeply involved into other node things, not just instrumentation. And then Han, um, who I'll uh, kind of reference back to with some of the topics later. But um, yeah, uh, all really, really awesome people. And I certainly couldn't do it uh, without them. 
but um, yeah, so what what are we gonna kind of talk about um, in this in this talk? And I uh, kind of want to just give you a quick outline. Um, so what what is it that we that we do is kind of what I already covered, right? But I want to also guide you through some of our current activities, uh, maybe some that we've just completed and that we're proud of that we've just completed. Um, but um, more importantly, the things that are ongoing and how you can potentially um, uh, collaborate here, right? And hopefully one day become part of uh, SIG instrumentation. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's get into it. Uh, yeah, so as I already mentioned, we have our triage meetings, right? And the way it works, if you're particularly interested right now already um, in instrumentation issues, they're all um, labeled on GitHub, so you can just uh, search for the SIGINT instrumentation label, and you'll see all the current um, current uh, like open issues that and PRs that people are working on. Um, we do review pretty much all uh, changes in in regards to metrics changes, um, just because uh, we try to um, uh, help people follow the guidelines and uh, kind of get, give advice for um, how to best structure metrics and so on. And uh, we also have a, uh, a kind of specialized framework within Kubernetes about that kind of wraps the Prometheus um, library so that we can uh, force a little bit more structure into it uh, just for the Kubernetes project so that we can enforce some guidelines a bit more um, with tooling as opposed to just people. Uh, but we certainly do um, review a lot of the changes still. Um, but I'll get a bit, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the framework uh, in a bit. Um, the, this, is, this part is uh, common throughout all SIGs within Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes has the so-called KEP, the Kubernetes Enhancement Proposals uh, pro process. And um, you can find all of the caps that we um, have written and may still be working on um, in, with this link. Um, but that's only for things kind of uh, that are in the Kubernetes Kubernetes repo. Um, all the sub projects uh, can, can, are kind of able to organize themselves and don't necessarily need to be included in the cap process. The cap process is mostly for like things that may even span multiple SIGs in terms of um, responsibility and uh, scope and being affected by it. So yeah, let's uh, look at some of our current topics and we'll we'll start with metrics. Um, just uh, as a very high uh, um, overview, some of you may already know this, but um, Kubernetes essentially uh, integrates very deeply into the uh, Prometheus project. Um, Prometheus is one of the other uh, CNCF uh, graduated projects. I happen to also work on Prometheus, um, but Prometheus was already um, integrated when I started working on Kubernetes, so it's not my doing, but I do enjoy it. Um, but essentially the way uh, Prometheus works is it, it uses a pull model. And so um, Prometheus goes and does HTTP calls to each Kubernetes component and scrapes the metrics that way then um, writes them to its internal time series database from where you can query it. Um, and so if you look at this picture, um, we in SIG instrumentation are concerned with the left side of the, of the picture, right? So we are concerned with actually um, serving that metrics endpoint to, to Prometheus and hopefully providing the most value that you can actually um, do some useful things uh, to monitor your, your Kubernetes clusters. So um, one thing that has been a very long uh, kind of um, project that we've been working on is our metric stability framework. I shortly touched on the, the framework earlier already, um, but it's been a long time coming and I really wanted to uh, give uh, Han a shout out here as well, who um, initially started this, but so many other contributors um, helped uh, get this across the finish line. And uh, just now in the um, 121 release, we have actually GA'd this, this feature. We have our first uh, metrics marked as stable. So that means that there is a certain period of time 
where uh, you can definitely rely on these metrics existing. Before, before this framework, we essentially had no stability guarantees around metrics. Um, and uh, that is still the case for most metrics, but we do now essentially have this framework that allows us to mark certain metrics as stable. And um, when, once they are, you can, you can actually rely on them. Um, and then there are a couple of other really cool ones that we're, that we're working on, um, both of them in, in alpha. Um, the pod resource metrics, um, one I pers per, uh, personally find uh, really useful. Essentially, um, what this feature is, is um, it is the scheduler reporting metrics the way it sees it. Um, uh, it sees the available resources in the cluster. And so the reason why this is useful is now we don't just have kind of an outside perspective on um, why partic particular pods may not be able to be scheduled, but now it's actually the scheduler um, reporting this information, the, the actual way the scheduler uh, perceives the, the state of the world, right? So this is um, incredibly useful for understanding and capacity planning um, your Kubernetes clusters. Um, in terms of uh, resources. And then uh, one other uh, really neat feature is dynamic cardinality enforcement. So with metrics, what uh, can potentially happen if we're not really careful with our um, reviews and um, there will always be human error, right? Um, we do have some tooling already available that prevents us from doing um, hopefully as many mistakes as possible, but no humans perfect. Um, and not neither is tooling necessarily, but um, this is essentially kind of a fail-safe mechanism that we can use to, um, if there is a cardinality explosion accidentally happening in a Kubernetes cluster, we don't necessarily need to patch the entire code base um, to be able to prevent this uh, cardinality explosion, but we can use some con configuration to prevent it in place. Um, so that's been, um, I think it's going to be a really useful feature for, for these cases when, when it does happen. Um, but yeah, these are kind of our metrics focused features that we're working on right now or have just uh, completed. Um, these are definitely really great um, ways to contribute um, to, the, to the metrics space. Um, but let's go on to logs and events. Um, in this uh, case, actually, we didn't have too many things um, about the events API um, happening since our last KubeCon. Um, in our last KubeCon, we, we announced the new version of events, but um, we try to always mix it up and make sure that we present the, the latest and greatest content here. Um, so right now, um, most of our logging efforts are concentrated around structured logging. Um, if you've been around uh, for a while, you know that uh, Kubernetes does not have uh, struct, did not have, does now, did not have um, storage grid logs uh, in the past, but that is changing. Uh, since uh, 1.19, we've had the alpha feature for um, structured logging, and that introduced a couple of new methods essentially against the Kubernetes logging library. And uh, this flag uh, with which you can enable structured logging in Kubernetes components. Um, this is still alpha um, and it's uh, been a really fantastic way uh, for a lot of people to start contributing to Kubernetes because essentially the entire code base needs to be migrated to these new um, structured log logging calls. And so this is a really nice uh, thing to, to contribute uh, through if, you, if you're interested in contributing. Um, but on a, on a larger scale, there's even more uh, that can be done aside from migrating. We need to do performance tests. Uh, we need to um, verify kind of that uh, the decisions that we've made in our designs are still panning out um, the way that we had hoped. Um, and overall, there's just a lot of uh, kind of stability work that is left to be done so that we can actually mark this as beta and then hopefully eventually um, graduated just like we've done with the stability framework, for example, that was also a process that we've, we went through. 
Um, there's a, a really cool blog post that was written about this. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, uh, there's a lot of work to be done here. And I believe there is a um, specific uh, working group uh, being formed around this effort. So um, keep an eye out on our mailing list or join any of our meetings if you're, if you're interested in structured logging and Kubernetes. Um, then one, the last thing I believe uh, for logging that we have uh, currently um, in progress is log sanitization. And essentially this is um, a combination of uh, static um, analysis um, and kind of n knowledge about um, particular things in Kubernetes to make sure that we don't accidentally leak secrets into logs, for example. Um, so this is all about um, security and this came out of uh, a security audit actually which I think this is so cool um, that we have these uh, being sponsored by the CNCF for example um, and that way uh, kind of we got this uh, independent security audit and this now uh, got kind of converted into a, um, a initiative uh, led by the Kubernetes community and in particular under the umbrella of uh, Kubernetes SIG instrumentation. Yeah, so uh, that's that in terms of um, logging um, initiatives in the Kubernetes project itself. Um, now, uh, the uh, latest things that we've uh, been looking at is we wanna make sure uh, that not just uh, kind of uh, metrics and logs, kind of things that are focused on a particular um, process is in place, but we also want to make uh, use of the really awesome capabilities that tracing allows us to do. And um, we introduced tracing, uh, a couple of tracing features. It's not necessarily uh, throughout the entire Kubernetes code base. There are um, some challenges um, here, but we definitely have some uh, some functionality for tracing available in Kubernetes since 120 and you can essentially just enable it uh, using this flag um, and uh, that that will allow you to configure the open telemetry collector and then that way you can send it to whatever um, tracing backend you you like um, yes i i really love tracing so i'm really happy that we um, that we're getting started on these topics but um, as i said these are just the topics that we um, are working on within the Kubernetes Kubernetes project. Um, as SIG instrumentation, we do a lot more than just um, the Kubernetes uh, repository itself. We have a number of sub projects. And so um, I, I'm not necessarily gonna highlight every single one that we have, um, but I'm gonna highlight the ones that I think um, are the most, most noteworthy and the ones that have uh, the most things happening right now. Um, and that's um, Coop State Metrics. Uh, maybe you're familiar with one or the other project here already, PromQ, um, Met Metric Server, and uh, Prometheus Adapter. No worries if you don't know what uh, these are, I'm gonna go and walk you through each of them as well. So Coop State Metrics is essentially an add-on agent that you can um, add to your Kubernetes cluster. And it uh, looks at your what's going on within your Kubernetes cluster, um, like actually the kind of domain specific things within Kubernetes and converts those, um, anything that looks like a number, it converts that into a metric. Um, and then you can scrape that with Prometheus just like everything else um, in the Kubernetes world. And um, it, uh, at one really awesome example like we have here on the, on the slide could be that you um, compare uh, the expected replicas um, of your deployment with the actual replicas. So this is really useful for alerting purposes, for example, where you wanna make sure that um, your, um, your deployment is actually doing the thing um, that you wanted to do and, or that it rolled out successfully or all sorts of um, situations where um, the deployment is not necessarily in the state that you want it to be. And uh, one really exciting thing about Kubestatic Metrics right now is that um, at, as of this recording, it's not necessarily released, but we are in the process of releasing uh, the second major version of it. 
Um, as, as I record this, uh, release candidate one is out, but I do believe um, once uh, you watch this recording, um, it, the, the ver uh, version two, the final release will probably be out. Um, if, not, if not, then it will be soon. Um, just uh, kind of, I'm not gonna go through all the uh, changes necessarily, but uh, basically V2 was like a, a chance for us to get rid of all the technical debt that has accumulated over the years. Um, and we've done a major cleanup throughout. Um, there are a couple of um, flag changes and a couple of new features actually. It's a couple of changed features, but if you're already using Kube state metrics, just check out the change log, check, uh, check out um, kind of um, look out for a blog post that I believe should be going out soon as well. And um, it's not too big um, of a change, but it's just for us maintainers, um, just a relief that we can finally get rid of uh, some of these things. Um, PromQ, I think might be our most recent edition. Um, actually, I, th I believe this was started by Han and Solly and maybe a couple of other Googlers. I can't uh, remember right now anymore. Um, but um, essentially this is uh, kind of a Prometheus, but within your terminal. And I think that's a really neat idea to just kind of explore slash metrics endpoints um, in real time and locally. And you can just query things immediately from your command line, not necessarily requiring an entire Prometheus to be set up and uh, creating configurations to scrape things. This is really just to understand your local instances um, a little bit better. Um, I think this is a really fantastic tool for, for kind of understanding the metrics that you might have available from, from a process. And it's not uh, specific to uh, Kubernetes at all. Um, it's actually totally um, general purpose. But um, the next project is metric server. And the way that you may have already uh, interacted with metric server is uh, through kubectl. So kubectl has uh, this subcommand called top, just like the Linux command. And using it, you can um, essentially request from the from Kubernetes uh, how much CPU and memory is your uh, are your pods and your containers using, as well as your nodes overall. And uh, this is. Uh, kubectl top is almost a side effect of what this was <laughs> initially used for, but it was it, it's useful for that as well. <coughs> um, essentially, this was in originally created uh, for to be able to be used for auto scaling purposes. So let's say you are using eighty percent of your memory um, horizontally scale your 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 application um, by one more pod or whatever. Um, your your horizontal pod auto scaler uh, definition is. Um, you can find it under the Kubernetes six uh, GitHub org. And essentially, um, just a very high overview of how metric server works is um, it um, very similar to Prometheus uh, goes and scrapes Kubernetes nodes, um, gathers that information, um, and then um, it's an it's what's what we call an aggregated API in Kubernetes which essentially just means that um, it is registered on the Kubernetes API um, to serve a specific API. Um, and whenever the Kubernetes API is asked for a particular request for that API, then it's just uh, proxied to the metric server and the met metric server will, um, will actually answer that request. Um, so that's kind of how um, a couple of APIs are pluggable within the Kubernetes ecosystem. And I, I go into this detail because the Prometheus adapter is essentially an alternative um, uh, implementation of this API that you could use if you may already use uh, Prometheus within your Kubernetes deployment, right? Because metric server essentially does the same thing as Prometheus by scraping nodes um, for this information. Um, it's kind of natural to not uh, duplicate this, this task within your cluster and um, uh, kind of use additional resources for this if you're already using this within Prometheus anyways for your maybe um, alerts and dashboards. So um, it's just, if you already use Prometheus, I recommend using, using this. Um, I actually forgot to update the repo link here. Um, this this uh, repository did move 
under the um, Kubernetes SIGs um, org recently. Um, it was originally uh, developed by Solly, um, but uh, kindly donated it uh, to uh, to be a Kubernetes SIG instrumentation subproject uh, recently. So uh, now it's under the umbrella of the Kubernetes SIG instrumentation. So yeah, hopefully um, I kind of demonstrated that uh, we do a lot of um, exciting and in interesting things uh, within Kubernetes SIG instrumentation. Um, and there are so many th uh, ways to get involved. Um, as I said uh, throughout the presentation, um, there are many metrics related topics you can get involved in, um, logging aspects that you can get involved in, the migration paths for structured logging, for example, or um, performance tests. Um, uh, the tracing work is definitely also not done. So if you're at all interested in any of these things, uh, do attend our SIG meetings um, and uh, we'll, we'll be more than happy to find uh, something that you can work on. Um, if you're interested in any of the um, sub projects, um, you can either contact uh, Lily or myself. Uh, if you're interested in uh, Coop state metrics, we're always seeking new contributors. Um, if you're interested in uh, metric server, you can reach out to Marek. If you're interested in PromQ, either to Han or Solly or Yuchen, um, we're all we're 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 a, a nice uh, bunch of people, and uh, we're we're always happy if uh, if you reach out directly or if you join our uh, SIG meetings, we'll we'll be more than happy to find a contribution you can get started with. Um, one more time, um, our SIG meetings are every uh, two weeks on Thursdays at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and then every other week on Wednesdays, 9 a.m. Pacific time, um, we uh, have our triage meetings. And these are the perfect meetings where you can, um, we, can we can kind of figure out something that you can work on if, that, if that's what you're interested in. Or if you just want to listen in, that's totally um awesome as well. Uh, we, we always like to hear feedback about things as well. So even if you, if you just have some feedback about any of the things that we're doing, we're more than happy to listen to you. Um, and yeah, uh, all the other uh, distribution channels, either Slack or mail, the mailing list are awesome as well. Once again, the chairs are Elana and uh, Han and tech leads are David Ashpole and myself. And um, just giving a quick shout out, um, there are some other cool um, special interest groups um, in the CNCF, for example, the uh, Observability Working Group. Um, they are also having a talk on Thursday, May 6th. Um, so do check them out as well. There are many other um, observability related um, uh, talks in the observability track and maintainer track. Do check those out as well. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for coming and I hope you have a great KubeCon.